It was anti-drug. There were more drugs in that plane going there. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty insane. Um, yeah. Did you play a, a place held 150,000 people. And they never had any, any event like that in their life. And, uh, uh, you know, it was the Amber Hard Rock. Hard Rock came and fed everybody. And I think well, the first day we were there, uh, we're having rehearsals and everybody's leaving. And I remember there was 500 bikers in front of the place, cars burning on two cylinder bikes. And it was like, like, like one of those Australian movies, you know, with uh, Mad, Max. Mad Max. It was, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. So uh, this guy by the name of Stas Naman who put it on there. He was, uh, he was probably the originally, uh, the only relation to the czar. And, uh, and he said, you gotta come back and, and you gotta say something to these kids. And I just said, well, and there's a whole film crew, and we went in the truck, and we said, follow us. And all these 500 took everybody to the hotel, and they just stood in front of the hotel and woke the whole hotel up. And that was the beginning, the first day. <laughs> <laughs> Tico used to be a lot different when... <laughs> Wild West. <laughs> he was a cowboy in the Wild West. <laughs> he was the sheriff of the cowboys. <laughs> there was crazy, crazy place. It was a crazy time. You know, as Americans, you guys are from all over the world, but as Americans, we grew up in that time and place with a Cold War mentality. And we were afraid of them. We, we they were didn't understand them. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronald Reagan convinced us that, you know, they were the bad guys. Um, and so to go there as a rock band, to light the Olympic torch when our Olympic athletes weren't, only, weren't able to go there, was amazing to us. Um, and then to find how warm and wonderful the people were. And we thought this is like one of those classic cases that you learn and you grow up and you're educated that politics and the perception of the media is not necessarily the truth. These people, like Sting once said, I hope the Russians love their children too. They do. They were great people. They were wonderful people. And they all did come to that stadium and, and, and they listened to our music, much like you're going to hear it tomorrow, because in truth, I'm telling these stories, we're playing those songs like Blood on Blood. I remember trying to talk. They don't understand English. <laughs> and they didn't know the record. <laughs> we died the first night. We got our asses kicked by the scorpions. You know, it was the second night that we came back and the folklore is, is that, you know, I'd gotten the Russian soldier to give me the uniform that you see in those videos. And, and I conned him with, you know, a pair of jeans and some burgers and got this soldier suit, told the band, you guys just start playing. I'll be out there, don't worry about it. I'll be somewhere in the stadium and I'll make my way down. You guys just keep going until I get to the stage. And I did the thing. We came up, we won the night. Tommy Lee went right over to Doc McGee, popped him right in the face, fired him on the spot. And he said, you planned this. And, he goes, I, and poor Doc, he was, he was dying as it was. He goes, I swear to God, I didn't plan it. It was him. <laughs> him was a son of a bitch to ever have to get his ass kicked once. It was never gonna happen twice. And so the true story, but there was, there, there was poor Doc. He aged 40 years old. It was, it was hell. I tried to find those guys and beat them up, but they left. <laughs> Chase them. Yeah, that was, it was crazy. We haven't been back since. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> still scarred. <laughs> All right, I think we got time for just one more, and then I want to get down to some pictures. Uh -huh. So 